So let's start at the beginning of your story because you you met her at college uh, in 2012. You were both 16. This was your first relationship. What what was she like? How did that relationship begin? It was fine. It was good, and it was it seemed normal, yeah. and everything was going very well. And then it all started to go a little bit. Well, there were there were sort of signs, weren't they? Warning signs early on. She she liked game playing with you. You'd go on holiday and, and she'd disappear for long yeah, periods of time. Was, and you, you say she was, um, she is uh, an intelligent woman, um, but, but she used that against you? Yeah, she was academically very bright. She got a lot of A's, went mm. to university, obviously, and mm. I wasn't of that type, and I think she used that quite a lot. In to, what way? What did she do? Just to belittle me, say, you're dumb, you're stupid, you're mm. thick, all the time. And you, you moved into her family home and the emotional abuse stepped up here and there was an incident where she told you that your grandfather had passed away. Yes. Um, I remember I was sitting in the bedroom upstairs and she come in to the room and said, oh, my mum's just got a message on her phone. I said, oh, OK, what's that? And she says, your granddad's died. Well, I just... Me and my granddad's were like that. He's watching it now and he's probably... <laughs> but, no, I mean... <sighs> Yeah, I and was she let you believe that for for a long two time. Hours, you were two hours, two hours. I was crying for, and I was just kept saying sorry. I didn't say bye and all this. And then, as she even said, "Do you want to go down and talk to my mum about it?" <laughs> so by then, you start thinking it's real. Wow. And then about half hour after that, she said, "Why do you care?" I said, "What do you mean? It didn't happen. It's not true." She um, she isolated you very cleverly from your family and your friends. Uh, she um, she took your phone away from you, yeah. closed down your Facebook page, opened up another Facebook page, yeah. um, and, uh, and and that was the one that she was in control of. So 2016, you move in together, and this is yeah. where the the physical abuse yeah. starts. Um, and I mean, this this started off where she'd be hitting you over the head with bottles and yeah, yeah, and knives were used also. In what way? How did she... Ab well, it started off, I was lying in the bed and she would wait till I was asleep and just hit me on the head with a bottle. I managed to get rid of the bottle without her knowing. And then she moved on to a hammer. She started hitting me with hammers everywhere, like my shins, arms, head. Um, and then I managed to throw that hammer in the field opposite. So I thought, oh, it's over. But then everything she could find to hit me with, from bits she... of wood... Yeah. She made you uh, made you sleep on the floor? Yeah, I slept on the floor for about eight months with... I had to wear my own clothes that I wore in the day. I probably wore the same clothes for about four days cos I couldn't take it off cos... And I was putting clothes on top of me as my quilt and I had clothes as a pillow. Mm. And you were too scared to, to complain or do anything about this? Yeah, uh, there was nothing I could do. I had no way of contacting anyone and if I did do it, I would have... I'd... She told me if I ever tried to leave, she'd kill me. And uh, and these things just came out of nowhere. There was nothing. There wasn't anything that pushed no. the button to make it happen. It's just I don't really understand why, but then it just developed into work more. Well, when did she When did she burn you? Um, she started stabbing me before that with a knife. Yeah. She wouldn't stab. She would hit with a knife as if it was a weapon. She'd hit, so it'd leave big gashes, and they were left untreated. And then after uh, it was November time, we went to go and watch a concert and I woke up because she was pouring boiling water onto my back. It was like an alarm call of... Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and of course, you, your back is scalded and, and yeah. you would normally need to get a medical attention for she this. She left it. I remember we walked around that city centre and um, I said, I begged her, should we just go to a pharmacy? I need cream. And I just remember having a T-shirt and I, I, I nicked cream. I just put it on my hand. I was in desperate pain. I was, Rubbed it all over my arm, and yeah, uh, horrendous. Well, you um, obviously you you know you were in, in hospital. Uh, they were going to have a look at the uh, the the damage to your wrist from the knife. Yeah. But she got you out of there. Wouldn't let you have that in case you told anybody what was going on. Yeah. And it was the neighbours actually. It was the it was the screaming and the shouting that uh, that the neighbours complained about. Yeah. Police came round, didn't they? Yeah. The police come round a few times, just ask questions and. I sort of brushed it off, I said. Even when they, I had a massive gash on my wrist, I said, I did it to myself, and they had to take me on face value. Mm. But eventually, they did. It was one police officer that got yeah. you in, into the back of the car and he turned off his camera on his vest. Yeah, he... no, he he come the week before when this happened, and then 
They You've got a huge scar, scar yeah. on your arm. Yeah. Oh, God, I just noticed that. that. And then this on here as well. Can you see the damage done to you? Really? Yeah, they, they said if it was a centimetre either way, I would have probably died. Yeah. So this so police it. officer, that finally, for the first time, you could trust and tell your story yeah. and tell him the truth. I mean, the relief of, of having that release. <sighs> or were you still scared? I don't know. What... Uh, I remember saying, he, he got me in the car, he questioned me in the house, we know it's not you doing it to yourself and this or the other. Um, he sat me in the car and he said, you're not getting out of this car until you tell me the truth. And I said, I'm doing it to myself. And he goes, you're not. He switched his body camera off and he goes, you're going to tell me now, straight away. So as soon as I knew that no one else was watching, it was just me and him, yeah. it come out. Yeah. And I said, please just go on the neighbours' accusations and don't say it's from me. From there, it's been... All moved and so, yeah. And so you did take it further. Um, and, uh, and then, as we said at the beginning of this um, interview, she's just been sentenced. Um, how do you feel feel about her now? I don't need to waste my energy thinking about her. Right. There's no need for that. We've had, um, we've had conversations, sadly, we've had conversations like this before, and, and this one won't be the last one, whether it's um, domestic abuse on, on a male or female, whoever, whatever the combination happens to be. <clears throat> but people always say, and you look at social media, they always say, well, why didn't you get out? Yeah. Why didn't you tell somebody? I ask you that question. It's such a difficult answer. You can, you'd only understand it if you were in it. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's impossible to explain.